Hello, bonus episode tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Wing Commander with me, Blue Inkilo. So, um, if you're watching the tracker on the left, you can see where we are. Um, but let me explain a little bit before we get to business today. We're going to be doing some bonus episodes of all the systems we missed, which are in the in the main playthrough. So we're going to be primarily going through the, uh, the good systems, the winning systems on the left side of the map. Uh, we're going to start today with McAuliffe 1. Now, if you had played Enyo a little differently last time around, instead of letting your Draymon be destroyed, basically, that was sort of the main thing, um, you'll get upgraded to a Scimitar immediately when you become Dimicaulif. So, you really only have to do two missions with a Hornet if you're playing properly. Uh, and I actually got a Bronze Star for not letting the, the Draymon get destroyed. So, if you if you shoot down all the enemies and, kill the, and save the Draymon rather than let it die, you actually get a Bronze Star... And uh, I got a promotion, too. I think that was for 10 kills. Because you start at 2nd Lieutenant, so... Pretty sure 10 kills is, is a promotion. For you, anyway. Not for Maniac. So, um, yeah. We're in a Scimitar, and we're going to find our wingmate soon. Uh, don't worry, though. It's not going to be Maniac. So, Maniac's only in Brimstone. So, thanks for lucky stars. That's Iceman and Knight over there. Knight's a darned reliable pilot. Solid shot, steady flyer. Not flashy at all. Sort of a craftsman. Gets the job done, though. Iceman, though, now. He's an artist. Best pilot on the Tiger's Claw. Lives to fly and to fight. He's totally ruthless and completely deadly. Some of the pilots say he's got Freon for blood. At least, that's where he got his call sign. So I expect that some of these uh, alternate path, um, you know, cutscenes, or, or whatever you want to call these dialogue, uh, are going to be repeat, repeats of the other side. But I'll read them out just for, for posterity. But... I mean, really, it's, uh, um, first time through is the most interesting story, I feel. Blue, they call me Iceman. Don't let night fool you. The Sim's a gun-heavy slug. Forget finesse, just head straight in, guns blaring. Give me a ship that takes skill, a raptor, even a hornet, or one of those new rapiers. If half of what they say is true, the rapier's a true artist ship. So yeah, we still haven't actually seen a rapier in, in this Let's Play, but, uh, maybe, maybe. Blue, right? I'm Knight. Welcome to Blue Devils. Ever flown scimitars before? I think you're going to like them. Scimitar isn't quite as fast or nimble as a hornet, but she's got twice the armor as well as heavier guns. And she handles like a centaurian mud pig. Iceman here will tell you speed and handling will save your butt. And he's right! So let's just continue. <laughs> let's see what the McAuliffe system has for us. Mission briefing. McAuliffe system, oh, 47 hours. 15 minutes into the briefing. All right then, Beta Wing will be led by Blue. Alden, you'll be flying on his wing. Ah, oh, I can tell you how I'm looking forward to it, Kurt. Instead of flying with a hornet, Alden gets a scimitar. Right. Since we jumped into the McAuliffe system just a few hours ago, we're still running preliminary patrols. Blue, you'll be flying a four-point route, checking several potential jump points. Here's your fly flight plan. Just fly to the nav points and make sure they're clear. Long-range scanners indicate some sort of debris near nav 3. We have reason to believe this might be a Kilrathi minefield, so be especially careful in that area. Questions? All right then, Delta Wingman. Delta Wing is Iceman and Angel. That's everyone. Last questions. No hands are raised. Good. Let's get to work. Squadron dismissed. So after all of that fun with uh, Hell's Kitchen last few episodes, now we're back at the top of the campaign map and uh, or the whatever the campaign roster. And uh, these missions should be fairly easy. Assuming you can survive Hell's Kitchen, these kinds of scimitar missions are going to be no big deal. Plus, with a little bit of luck, we won't be in a scimitar for very long anyway. So we got uh, four points of navs. We're actually going to go nav one, two, four, three to save a little bit of mind travel. And honestly, we just... Yeah. It'd be easier if we just send Paladin home, but it's fine. Oh, blast, laddie! The enemy are upon us! Go to back to base. He's going back to base. See you later. Alright, we got this. We got, what, two Drowthy against me in a scimitar? Alright, remember, th or three scimitar. Three, three of them. 3,000 is the number I was looking for, anyway. Now, I should try to find that one that I almost killed, but... Wow, that one, that one did not really do much. Not very good shooting there at long range. 
I think he was technically just out of my gun's range, so even good accuracy would have not hit there. So we took a missile to the butt, but I think we'll be okay. It's weird. I don't know if they've got like weak points or something, but it feels like Drowthy, sometimes they die just in a few hits. Whereas other times it seems to take uh, quite a lot of shots for them to actually go down. Like it's, it's it just feels like there's a a bit of variety and a variability in, in how many hits it takes to kill them. I suppose they've got big wings, so it depends on what armor you're chewing through. Oops, I actually didn't mean to go to Nav 3. Oh well, we're going through the minefield. I was gonna sort of try to navigate around it, but uh... Scimitar through mines. Everyone's favorite, right? So it does feel like in uh, the DOS Wing Commander one, the good news is the um, the minefields seem sparser than the asteroid fields. So it's... I wouldn't say safe to boost through them, but it's less dangerous boosting through a minefield than a uh, an asteroid field. Most of the time, you know, it's the homing mines crashing into you that's the problem. So going fast lets you sort of skim by them before they explode. Generally. Now, we did lose some armor there. No internal damage. I'm not terribly worried because we're still in, you know, in the early missions. But, uh, yeah, dodging mines is certainly not my favorite part. I don't think anybody likes flying through minefields. Alright, we've got some three southies. Alright, let's do this. You know, if you want to fire a missile at me, I'll return the favor. Don't think my missile did any better than theirs, but... Now, one thing that I, I believe we, we talked about a little bit last time we were doing the early missions... Actually, something, either my missile or some of my, my uh, joust shots actually to hit this uh, selfie. But, like, the enemy does seem to have sort of crippled pilots early on. Either the ships are weaker or the pilots are just not as good. Kind of training AI, I guess. One of the reasons you should have no excuses for losing the first few missions. So anyway, there you go. Not exactly a speed run, but, you know, pretty quick. We'll probably have to release two of these episodes a day for some of these easy early ones. So I think because I'm technically doing keyboard controls, part of my control problems, I was, I was thinking about it between recording, some of my control issues have been because keyboards, as a general rule, can only buffer three key presses at a time. Why did we not land? There we go. Uh, so sometimes, you know, if I'm pressing a lot of controls, it's because it, they're all being mapped to the keyboard. And unlike a normal gamepad to, to computer sort of system where you can use all the buttons at the same time, uh, I think we're getting limited to three at a time, which if I'm pressing down and up and shoot, that's three buttons. And if I try to roll at the same time, it doesn't work or, you know, weird stuff like that. Although sometimes the game is just slowing down and it's not recognizing, you know, inputs. It's an old game, guys. Mission debriefing. Oh, oh, five, five hours. Well flown, Blue. You handled those flea bags like an old pro, almost like you've been pl flying for a long time. Thanks, sir. Having Paladin go home made it easy. Now, laddie, don't brag on me or the colonel will start expecting more from me. So let's go over the mission report. You scragged six kill Rathy Blue, and Paladin did nothing because you sent him home. That's all then. Get out of here. Alright, nice easy nav, uh, nice easy patrol. Nothing really too exciting to talk about. Let's save it and end our episode. So thanks for watching. McAuliff 1, no big deal. McAuliff 2 and 3 should be more interesting than the early Hornet missions because um, because we're in a scimitar, the game does give us bigger targets to blow up. <clears throat> which kind of means uh, I actually prefer... This is why I like I prefer the winning path more. We jump through the ships quicker, so we spend a lot more time in big ships instead of spending three systems in a Hornet and then like four systems in a scimitar. Um, plus we get more interesting objectives, generally. Generally. So anyway, we'll end this episode here. Thanks for watching. I guess, you know, how are we doing on the kills? There we go. We're, we're still in last place because suddenly Maniac is actually doing well getting kills for once. Crazy. 
Anyway, I'll see you guys next episode for more Wing Commander. Have a great day.